In this video, we are walking through the stages of infection, which are incubation, prodromal, illness, decline, and convalescence. Assalamualaikum everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today, we are going to talk about the stages of infection. But before starting the video, I like to tell you guys that these videos are meant for educational purposes. Things and treatments may change with time. If I get wrong or miss anything, your input is always welcome in the comments section. Let's get into it. Before talking about the stages of infection in detail, we should know what is an infection. It is the invasion and growth of pathogen, the microorganisms or germs in the human body. For example, flu, which is caused by virus. It invades and increases its number in the human body, which leads to flu. Measles, pharyngitis, it can be viral or bacterial. Coronavirus disease, UTI. There are five main stages of infection, named incubation period, prodromal period, specific disease or illness period, decline period, and convalescence or recovery period. In some places, you will find that they've written there are four stages of infection. They will exclude the decline period because decline period is sometimes included in the convalescence or the recovery period. We'll talk about that in later. What is the difference in the decline and the convalescence period? And you will get to know why it is so. We'll also talk about this graph. Lecture outline. We are done with the introduction, we are done with the definition of the infection. Now we'll be talking about the stages of infection or disease in detail and at the end, as usual, we'll review the lecture. Incubation period. It is a time between acquisition of the organism or toxin, the exotoxins or the endotoxins we've talked about, and the beginning of very first symptom. It is behind the scenes situation in which pathogen is making its way in the body and body's immune system is unaware of what's going on. This could be a few days or weeks depending on what type of pathogen it is. That's why written time varies. And in that period, patient acts as carrier. Like patient is not showing any symptoms pa means patient is asymptomatic, but at the same time, patient is able to transfer the infective organism. The so steps that are involved in the incubation period includes entry to the host, entry of the microorganism or the pathogen into the host. For example, virus enters into human or a bacteria enters into human. Pathogen colonizes. After entry, it starts to colonize in the body and then it increases in number, which, which is pathogen exponential reproduction. Let's talk about the graph. Here on the y-axis, I've got number of pathogens, which is shown in red color. And on the right side of the y-axis, we've got severity of the symptoms, which is shown in blue color, this one. And on the x-axis, we've got time. Let's discuss the incubation period. The symptoms in incubation period, there are no symptoms in the incubation period. That's why this blue line is straight. But with the passage of time, the number of pathogens increases. And this graph is moving upward just like that. And at this point, the prodromal period starts. Let's talk about the prodrome period, which is also called as prodromal stage or prodromal period. This is when that first symptom starts. The symptoms are not specific and these symptoms are also not severe. They are mild, for example, low-grade fever, headache, malaise and loss of appetite. Person knows that there's something off in the body and is going to be sick very soon. Here you can see that the number of pathogen is increasing constantly to this stage and also the symptoms started to increase but these are mild symptoms, right? Disease specific or illness period. This is a stage in which overt signs and symptoms of the disease occur. Symptoms are specific to the type of pathogen and infection or disease. It is also termed as acute stage. All of the symptoms that are present and the person feels unwell. Overall body has mounted an immune response at this point and the general malaise, fever, unwell feeling is due to the immune response. Disease is a state in which body can't maintain homeostasis. Time of that period depends on the virulence of the pathogen and the resistance of the host. How strong is the host immune system? If this stage or this period is not resolved, it can result in septicemia and death. In this graph, you can see that the number of pathogens increases at a higher rate and also the symptoms increases with the passage of time. Next up is the period of decline or the decline period. In some places, this one is not mentioned. It is included in the convalescence period or it is not mentioned, but I mention it for your ease. Symptoms decrease, but person is still ill, which means that person started to feel well, but is ill. The number of pathogens start to decrease and the host is susceptible to reinfection in this stage because the pathogen is present inside the body. Person started to feel well after a period of disease, 
but that infection can occur again and the ongoing injury can manifest chronic infection. Here you can see that the number of pathogens decreases and also the symptoms and their severity. The last stage of this infection is the convalescence or the recovery period. This is my favorite. Illness abates, means decreases, symptoms resolve, health is restored. IgG and IgA, the immunoglobulin G and immunoglobulin A antibodies prevent a reinfection. Time varies depending on the severity of the disease and the type of infection. And also, patient is carrier. Patient has recovered from the disease, symptoms are not present, but patient is able to transfer the pathogen who is responsible for causing the disease to other human beings. As you can see that the number of pathogens has decreased, but they did not reach the zero. As for symptoms, they decreased and also reached the zero. Key points to mention. After the recovery period, some individuals become chronic carriers of the organisms and may shed them while remaining clinically well. Others may develop a latent infection which can recur either in the same form as a primary infection or manifesting different signs and symptoms. Although many infections cause symptoms, which are clinical infections, and many others are subclinical, that is the individual remains asymptomatic although infected with the organism. In subclinical infections and after the recovery period is over, the presence of antibodies is often used to determine that an infection has occurred. Alright guys, let's review everything quickly. For the stages of infection, the organism has to enter the body. It is the time of infection when the microbe enters the body. Then the incubation period starts. The incubation period is the time between the moment that, that person is exposed to the microbe or toxins and the appearance of first symptom. Second one is the prodom period, which is the time during which non-specific symptoms occur. Third one is the specific illness or disease period. It is a time during which the characteristic features of the disease occur. Next up is the decline period. And decline period is coming from top to there, in which the symptoms uh, are decreasing with the passage of time and also the number of the pathogen. Recovery period is a time during which symptoms resolve and health is restored. And after the recovery period, it is the return to health state in which antibodies protect against reinfection. That's it for today's video. If you liked this video, make sure to hit that like button and leave a comment below and let me know that you enjoyed it. And also, if you want to connect with me on my socials, I've got my Instagram, I've got my Twitter, and I do upload blogs. And I'll catch you next time. Till then, assalamu alaikum.